Welcome to the screencast lesson for quiz number six. Um, we're going to start off with a bird called the chestnut-sided warbler. Um, warblers, I don't know if we've talked about them. We did have the common yellowthroat already, which is a warbler. Um, warblers are a group of small songbirds. They usually have fairly complex sounds. They're usually fairly small insect-eating birds. Um, they aren't necessarily closely related to each other, uh, but they are often referred to as kind of the jewels of the forest because they are often very brightly colored and they're not, because they're insect eaters, they don't tend to come to feeders, so people don't really know they're there. So these are a fun group of birds that um, it's fun to get to know because a lot of people don't even know they're around. And a chestnut-sided warbler is a good example of this because there are, in the Green Mountains in Vermont, a ton of chestnut-sided warblers. They're all over. Um, they're one of the warblers that nest closer to the ground. Um, they tend to be found in very kind of shrubby, scrubby areas, and they are just all over the place. Um, so I hope this is a fun bird that you will be able to see. Now, they are um, migratory, so they're not right here now, but when it starts to warm up and the migrants start to come in, um, this will be a fun one for you to look for. So the chestnut-sided warbler, I'm not really thrilled with these photos on this site, but um, they do have a yellow cap on their head. Um, it can be more yellow than this. This is not the most stunning uh, looking chestnut-sided warbler here. So they have a yellow cap and of course they have chestnut sides, chestnut being kind of a you know rusty brown color, so reddish brown. So they have this uh, brown stripe on the side. They have this distinct kind of facial mask that's a dark eye line and a mustache kind of put together. So you get this interesting black V on their face. They do have some wing bars, which are um, what we refer to as these lines that come across when the secondaries and um, tertiaries, not secondaries, what do I want to say? The tertials, no. What am I? Oh, greater coverts. That's what I want to say. Secondary coverts and primary coverts have uh, tips on the end. They they create a stripe across the wing, and these often have a yellowish color, whitish yellow color on the stripes on the wing bars. Um, sort of a stripy black back and tail. Okay, so they're fairly distinct. Let's look at another photo. There's one here of one singing. Notice that again that black. Eye line and mask, yellow head, brown um, sides. Now there are a couple other warblers ha that have brown, like a bay breast warbler, have brown on the chest more, but this is definitely just a brown stripe on the side. It's fairly distinct looking, and you do need to know the call on this one. The song, um, people say, sounds like it's saying, please, please, please to meet you. Okay, let's listen to another one. Sorry about that. Please, 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 I really encourage you to listen for this, to learn the sound, and to start listening for it in the spring. Okay, moving on, the next bird we're going to do is the white breasted nuthatch. So, this bird is often referred to as um, the upside down clown when we're teaching it to young students because they are one of the few birds that will walk upside down, like they'll walk down the trunk of a tree. Um, I talked about that a little bit in one of the uh, screencast lessons from last week. They, most birds do not like being upside down and they will not even know what to do if they're put upside down. But, um, but nut hatches do go upside down and around in Vermont we have a couple different kinds of nut hatches. Um, but the one we're learning today is the white-breasted, so it has white 
does have a little bit of rusty undertail coverts, um, but it also has a black cap, and the cap goes all the way down past the nape. Okay, so you go all the way. It's not just a little cap on the top of the head. It's really a stripe that goes all the way back like this. Um, they have kind of a distinct shape. Their beak is almost upward turning. Remember, they use this to poke into barks of the tree and find things underneath um, the pieces of bark. So you'll often see them perched on a tree. Um, they aren't out on the limbs so much as they are on the trunk of the tree. Here's a good picture of one upside down on the trunk of a tree. Notice the big black cap going down to the nape, white breast, gray, slate gray. That gray is, you know, a common bird color, much the color of the Tufty Tin Mouse. Okay. I'm not going to ask you to know the sound of this one, but I am going to play it for you. Um, to me, it sounds like, remember I said they were upside down clowns? So I think of this sound as almost being a clown horn, the uh, um, little honky sound that a, like a, a clown horn makes. Let's see what you think. You'd also think of it as a clown laughing. Okay, so that is the white-breasted nuthatch. Let's move on to another sparrow. We're going to learn the song sparrow this week. So we learned the field sparrow last week. And the field sparrow, remember, had um, pink legs and pink beak. Here we have a song sparrow. And song sparrows have a couple of things. They're very striped on the breast. And the stripes, you can't really tell on this one. Let's see if we can find a picture. Oh, come on. They don't even have a picture. Oh, here we go. The stripes often kind of meld together in a spot right here on the chest. That's often referred to as a stick pin, like a like it has a brooch in the middle of its um, breast. So um, they also are they're very striped on kind of the sides of the breast. They have this dark spot on the chest. They do have what makes sort of a bit of a cap on the head. Um, so it has a darker on the top of the head. It has a dark eye line. But one of the distinctive features too is notice the mustache, right? It, it looks like uh, it's got mutton chops going on. So these dark mutton chops, it's got the stick pin, not very distinctive here, but usually is. It's got a dark eye line, dark lines on the head, and very stripy. Okay, and I am asking you to know this one by song. Um, and this song can vary a lot. So birds, because they're so vocal, they often have something we refer to as dialects. They sound different depending on where they are. So song sparrows that I knew in Indiana before moving here or in New York had a different sound than they do here in Vermont. But one thing to look for is that all of them make a short, these short introductory notes, usually three, sometimes two. So it's like teet, teet, teet. And then they go on to make this sort of complex vocalization. So be looking for those introductory notes. Here's an example. Oh, that's a terrible example. Here, let's try this one. Uh, let's try this one. It's a little more what I'm going for. Did you hear those introductory notes? Right? Um, here, let's try this one. Okay, so again, these two introductory notes. Okay, it could be two or sometimes three. Um, and I'm not sure where these calls came from. This is from Audubon, and they don't list where these calls came from. Notice if you look at the range map, song sparrows are all over the United States. And so, um, depending on where you are, they can sound quite different. But be listening for those introductory notes and a fairly complex, not very musical vocalization. Okay, here's a bird that I think a lot of you will recognize, and that is the common loon. Oops, sorry about that. So the common loon is a bird that um, is a bird of the north country. 
It's a water bird. We talked about it when I was um, explaining about birds that have legs really far back on their body because they hunt fish under the water. This is one of those birds. Um, loons, there are a couple of different kinds of loons, but around here we only have the common loon. So um, it's very distinctive. It's got this black head, a pointed beak. Makes sense, right? It's hunting fish. It's got to be able to pierce them, stab them. Um, it has a checker, like a checkered, very uh, patterned, you know, not random, but rather in rows, checkered white and black back. And it has this um, neck ring. So I think we're probably all familiar with it. Um, here they do very elaborate courtship rituals, um, which include them coming up out of the water kind of like this. But here's a good look at their back. Look at how oh, it's just a beautiful, really stunning bird. It's a large bird, um, bigger than most ducks. Here's a fun one. They do carry their young chicks on their back from time to time. It's really adorable. And you do need to know the call here. This is a call that I think many of you will have heard on northern lakes. It's a beautiful... Um, we're gonna learn. We're gonna. I'm gonna ask you to know the yodeling call. They make lots of different sounds, but let's try. Here, I'm gonna play this one for you. Again. Such an interesting haunting sound. Okay, so that is the common loon. All right, this is next bird is very interesting. Um, this is the brown headed cowbird. So, this bird is considered an invasive species in. A place like Vermont. It is not, it is native to North America. It is a grassland bird that used to follow around buffalo herds. And the buffalo would um, stir up insects, and the, you know, as the, as the big herd was going by, and these brown headed cowbirds would follow along and eat the insects that were stirred up. And they were so, the insects and the buffalo herds were so important that they adapted a strategy where they could follow the herds no matter where the herds went, no matter when the herds went, which means they didn't, they decided, they decided, terrible. They adapted uh, to not building their own nests because if they stopped and built a nest and hatched young, they would um, lose the herd. And so they instead will um, dump their eggs in the eggs of other birds' nests. So you may have heard of this bird. It's called nest parasitism. So they, a, a lot of birds do this too, not a lot, but many birds do have this strategy. Um, some birds do it some of the time. Brown-headed cow, cowbirds do it all the time. They never make a nest. They will lay an egg in another bird's nest. And birds, because they're, you know, very instinctual, they operate on instinct, they do not necessarily know their chicks from other bird chicks. And so they will raise the young as their own. Problem is, um, brown-headed cowbird. Have, they, in order to be successful at this, they did several things. Um, their eggs tend to hatch first. Their young tend to grow very quickly and be bigger, so they outcompete when they, you know, the mother bird or the father bird comes in with food. They can grab for it first, and they tend to get the first meals, and so they tend to outcompete the other um, birds. So the other, when there's a cowbird egg in the nest, the other chicks do not fare very well. Sometimes the cowbird baby will even push the other little um, birds out of the nest. Um, so in areas where cowbirds were native birds, like in the grassland areas, those birds adapt as, you know, strategies to be able to recognize cowbird eggs. Um, so they had ways to deal with cowbird in invasion and nest parasitism. Uh, up in our little forest land birds of the north woods do not 
have these strategies, and so they do tend to get um, outcompeted by the cowbirds, so they're considered um, an invasive species here. They are um, blackbirds, so they tend, they're they very black. They have a bit of an iridescent, too. You can see a little bit of a purpley color here to their body. Their head is brown, and the males, the head is brown, and rather shiny, too. Here maybe is a better photo. Um, so blackbird, brown head, brown-headed cowbird. Um, kind of an interesting shape on the beak as well. I am going to ask you to know the sound on this one. The sound um, is a really, it's almost like water bubbling. It's a very uh, interesting water bubbly kind of sound. Let's listen. Okay, so that is the brown headed cowbird. Let's. Oh boy. Um, we are going to do the common raven. So, in these northern areas, uh, ravens. And raven is rather like a large crow. Um, Except the raven um, is a little bit different in a few ways. It's larger. It has a rounded tail. I think of that for raven for round. We'll start with R. So a rounded tail. They have a larger beak. Um, so if you look at the bill compared with the size of the head, it's bigger on a raven than a crow. Um, and as I said, they're very large. So look at the large beak on there, okay? And they're they're larger than a crow. Um, and I am not asking you to know the sound on this one. They're a large, solid black bird with a large beak and a rounded tail. Um, I think that is what I want you to know. Okay. Sorry. Okay, we're going to go for one of our winter birds. So this is a bird you could be seeing around. This is an interesting bird <clears throat> called the dark-eyed junco. And if you look at the range map over here, you'll see that um, the breeding grounds is way up northern Canada, Alaska. Okay, it's a really far north. So that's where they breed. That's where they nest. And so when they want to get warm in those Arctic winters, they come down into the United States uh, for their summering, I mean their wintering ground. So this is the warm, so Vermont is the nice warm place for them, uh, for, the, to, for them to winter in. So we do not see these birds in the summertime, we see them in the wintertime. Um, and they will come to feeders, they tend to feed on the ground, so you will see them also underneath, um, on the, you know, on the ground underneath feeders. They vary quite a bit. Um, they actually used to be uh, considered several different species that have been all put together in what are now called the dark-eyed junco. Um, some of them have kind of a brownish body, but they're a, a dark gray, a darker than like that tufted titmouse gray. They're dark gray. And one of the distinctive features you can kind of see here, and that is they have white outer tail feathers. So when they fly, you see white on the sides of their tail. They do have a dark eye, and they almost have a dark spot around the eye. Notice this one has less brown. It does have some brown here on the back. Uh, I'll show you one more. Okay, so they're a small bird. Um, think a little larger than a chickadee. They have kind of a pinky white beak. They have a darker tail and they don't have a lot of coloration but they can have brown on their body. Okay and you do not need to know the sound for this one, the song. Alright last one for this week is the red-eyed vireo. And yes the red-eyed vireo does have a red eye. Now you have to get pretty close with your binoculars to see that eye but um, if you do bird banding like I do, sometimes you get the 
pleasure of holding one and seeing its bright red eye. Red-eyed vireos are birds that... Vireos are another insect eater. They're a lot like a warbler in many ways. They're a little bit um, larger usually, but still a very small bird. And they sit up in the trees and, and sing and sing and sing. The red-eyed vireos are one of the birds that's known to sing all day long into the afternoon. Some researchers have said they counted something like 20,000 songs, uh, times that they repeated their song over in a day. Um, so how do you know a red-eyed vireo? It's got a white breast. It has an olive-colored olive, olive -colored back, sides, um, back, wing, and tail. It's got a gray cap with a dark eye line and a dark eyebrow. So you get these kind of two lines, red-eyed, white breast, greenish colored back. Let's see another photo. So here we go. Notice the greenish tinge, okay, on the wing and back. Very white underneath, gray cap, dark eye line, dark eyebrow, with, which gives it gives us this white uh, eyebrow as well, like in between the dark lines. Okay, you do need to know the call on this, and it's very easy. Red-eyed vireos um, are constantly asking questions. They're constantly saying, "Here I am. Where are you? Here I am. Where are you? Here I am. Where are you?" Over and over and over. Okay, those are the those are the birds for this week for quiz 6.